If you are someone in mid-career or in your midlife and you have been contemplating on transitioning to do something bigger, you've been thinking there's this calling inside of me that is yearning to do something different with my life, this video is for you. So in this video, I'm going to discuss the tools that you need for life and work reinvention and how to use the experience of change that you're going through today as the catalyst to reinvent yourself and know that the answers are already within you to actually help you focus on what's next in your work life. Escape the nine to five and create your path to freedom. Hello, hello, and thank you for joining me for another episode of Screw the Cubicle TV. If you're new here, I'm Lydia Lee, the life and work reinvention strategist at Screw the Cubicle. And this channel is really dedicated in helping people really transition from old identities, whether it's your corporate job or whatever it is that people have expected of you in your identity, and for you to really start to look at your next big thing. What is that next life purpose and your work purpose that you really want to go after, even if you're not courageous enough to go after it today is that you are determined to go after it and this channel will help you to really process uh, all those changes and uncertainty that can sort of stand in the way of you and your big dreams and really help you to just build an intentional life and career that you can be proud of. So today's episode was really inspired by um, a woman named Karen who emailed me um, after watching some of my videos here and she had a question sort of a, around mid-career transition. It's like, what about all of us that are in mid-career that are maybe low in risk tolerance and we're feeling a little bit, um, you know, frightened of what it, we think we need to, it takes to do our own thing when there's all these younger people, younger millennials that sort of seem to be really techy at what they do. Um, and how do we sort of like deal with that? And um, what if we're concerned about not being competitive or having feelings of ageism, right? That's sort of occurring in our experience right now. So hence why this video really, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about what it looks like to reinvent at mid-career and what are some of the positive benefits you can actually take on the ride for what's next for your journey that may not be available for let's say someone that's potentially younger than you. So um, before I get into the meat and the nitty gritty of this content piece of this video, I also want to share with you that this question has also sparked inspiration for me to create a new webinar. Now I do this usually every month or two where I you know, have the platform to really dive deeper into showcasing the tools and a framework that you can use to go through transition and change and to build that dream life and that dream career you really want to have. But I want to arm you with the tools. And sometimes that's not something I can do in like a 10, 15 minute video on YouTube. So most of my trainings are about an hour. Uh, so there is one coming up. And so if you click on the link that's in the descriptor of this video or a card that might be appearing on the video, or if you're on my video blog, it usually will be underneath this video. You can join me for this new webinar training called the key tools for reinvention and how uh, you can use this framework to live out your vision for a meaningful life and career. And if you're watching this, even after the live webinar goes live, it's totally okay. You can always join me for the replay if you sign up as well and you'll be able to get access to that video right away. Okay, so here's what is sort of happening as you are in this crossroad of whether to continue at your job or even at a career. If you're a business person, maybe it's even continuing the kind of business that you've been running. Uh, but very likely, if you're watching this video, there's been a sort of nagging unfulfillment feeling, right? That's inside of you, that's in your tummy, that's sort of going, oh, this is not it. This is not all of who I am and all I want my life to represent. So at this moment in time, what's really going on is that you are in the midst of shifting your identity. Now, a lot of people may not realize this is happening because they might be um, maybe thinking that the problem that they have is they don't know what kind of work they should be going into or what business to start or, you know, what's next for them. But a lot of that, the first inaugural obstacle that really stands in the way between where you are and where you want to go is whatever you believe your identity is right now and whether or not um, you can shift into something new without feeling like a fraud or an imposter. 
So we want to realize that as we go through reinvention, the first stage of problems that we have to tackle is really understanding who we are without falling into the trap of making other people happy, right? Or societal expectations of what people, other people out there believe is the responsible thing to do as an adult. Um, and it might also be caused by, you know, the expectations that your family and friends might have on you. So we want to really look at that to really understand without those things, right? Without that noise coming in there to distract you from the deep knowledge you probably already know about yourself, who do you want to become if you uncuffed yourself from old identities that no longer serve you or no longer fits into the values of a vision of a life that you really want to have. So your identity really is your sense of self, right? Who you are and what you stand for. And your identity is the foundation, right? How you perceive yourself, how you perceive your own abilities um, really helps you to make decisions of how, what you want in your life. So if that feels hazy, and that doesn't feel confident and you are distracted by the noise of expectations, we've got to take a look at that, you know, and start to think about who am I without these things? And what are some consequences I might even experience if I was to choose to become someone different? Now, I'm very aware that there's lots of things uh, that can um, instigate the imposter syndrome or the feeling of fraudiness. Now, being a woman of color, being from a different culture, um, be, you know, being raised by immigrant parents that probably had a completely different dream for me than when I decided to quit my job. You know, my mother was telling me, what the hell are you doing? You know, you've got such a great opportunity for partnership, for a great pension, and why are you giving that up? That's not what we raised you to do. That's not what we did, uh, you know, work so hard and struggle towards to bring you from Malaysia to Canada to have a better education. So we have to think about what are some of the obstacles that might stand in the way of what we, what we want to perceive ourselves to be and what we want our lives to be surrounded by versus what other people want. And that, and that those obstacles sometimes have real consequences, right? Sometimes if you didn't come from a background of privilege, right? Um, you might actually have some real consequences of your family shunning you or your spouse not agreeing with you and might break up with you, or maybe your children that might need that security and you feel that you're not being a good mother or father if you make this jump to something else, right? We have to explore what it is that might be keeping us stuck in an old identity and figure out if those things are true or is it something that we have assumed that could happen based on our fears, right? So there are social conditionings in play. There are uh, others' expectations. There could be cultural backgrounds, religious backgrounds that are affecting your decisions. There could be things like your race background and your gender background that could be preventing you from becoming that person you really want to be. Now, I think that's an important thing to mention because, um, it doesn't matter what kind of great big ideas and inspiration you might absorb along the way. You ain't going to go after it if you feel that something could happen to you, right? Or there is a repercussion or consequences very severe to your well-being if you went after it. Now, this might uh, require you to take some time, that necessary pause to reflect on what those things are, because during an identity shift, it could feel like your world could be falling apart. It could feel like the things you've worked hard for might be flushed down the drain. But maybe it doesn't have to be. Maybe that monkey mind that we have inside our brain is flashing all these stories to us because it sort of wants us to stay put, right? That's what the ego and the mind does, right? It wants you to be safe. So let's just do what we've done. Even if you're unhappy, that's not my job to keep you happy. Let's just stay here where it's safe. But your heart may want something different. And at mid-life and at mid-career, the great benefit of being at this age group you know, and I'm someone that's in mid, mid, mid life and mid career as well. I'm turning 37 next year. I think that this is the time that you can, you can start to accept and embrace that you've gone through some life experience that have told you what it is that you, you know, love doing or would love to have more of in your life versus what you don't like anymore. Now, in the beginning of time, maybe in your early twenties, you didn't, you just wanted to be successful. You wanted to sort of have a job and go after your dreams of some kind. And now you learned a little bit more about yourself from experiencing life with certain years, right? In your belt or, you know, in, your, in, in, your, uh, in a stage of life, if you will, uh, to be able to discern what it is that you like and you don't like, what it is that brings you joy or doesn't. Right. But and I think at this point is, is also important to trust yourself that some of these answers that can come from if 
I wasn't going to be afraid of listening to what other people think of me. If I wasn't afraid of not being able to introduce myself as a lawyer or doctor or whatever it is that the profession you've held on to for so many years, who would I be? Right? That's a really honest reflection at a place that you're, you're here right now. So introspection really matters at this stage of the game because we want to really be looking for deeper meaning in the so perceived crisis that you might be feeling. Now, here's a truth bomb. In every stage of your life, whether it's now or later, you will have to go through some form of reinvention. When we have children, we'll go through a reinvention of self. When we start a family, we might do that again. When we change jobs, when we change locations, when we change, when something major happens to our lives, you know, separation, divorce, whatever it is that could sometimes be sort of a breakdown of our identities and our lives, we will be forced to reinvent ourselves. And so this skill set of reinvention, this muscle that you can work out is going to be good for your future because that, that self-awareness of who you need to become in your next chapter of life is something that you'll have to do over and over again in your life, especially if you're looking for a deeply fulfilling and awakened life that isn't on autopilot, right? And isn't just the sort of routine thing that you really want to do. So the introspection is going to help you to really distinguish what may be some personal value shifts that you're doing at the moment or that is necessary to be done at the moment. What used to matter to you before and no longer does. It doesn't mean that you were wrong before. It meant that those values were important to you at some point in your life. And now there's new values that might emerge in your life to cause you to desire bigger things, to involve yourself in different things and to listen to that. And what adjustments of your values, right? After knowing and discerning what your value values may have shifted into is to really think about adjustments of like, now that I know that these values are important to me in the stage of life I'm in, what adjustments do I need to do in my life right now at midlife or mid career, right? That I need to listen to and adapt in my life in order to, for me to live out those values. And so there is a difference between knowing your values and living it out. Living it out allows you to actually put it on, to try it on for size, right? And go towards feeling, hey, do I feel better? Do I feel renewed? Do I feel energized and empowered with this new value that I'm now putting on in my life? So this moment of pause, which is super important, right? Which I will explain a lot more if you join in my webinar, how to make that reflection uh, and introspection process for yourself. Uh, you're going to then gain clarity around the influence that you want your life to have and the version of success that you are now wanting to go after. That's a huge, important piece, version of success. So if you're in mid-life or mid-career, very likely you followed a particular trajectory or a plan that's either taught to you by your parents, the education system, by your colleagues, by your industry, whatever it is that you've been a sponge to absorb in. And so now is the opportunity, right? Through that messiness of crisis of, you know, the crossroads you're experiencing right now is to really think about what kind of version of success means something to me. So for me, a version of success is not always to do with the amount of money in my bank account. Yes, I need to deal with my baseline needs, right? Maslow's hierarchy of needs. But I also need other things that make me feel successful, like deeper meaning in the way that I work, in you know how I get to experience my life. What kind of family do I want to build with a very new, unconventional path that I might be going into? That's part of the plan of my success, that everything has to click in in order for me to feel wholeheartedly successful. So just focusing on money isn't going to bring you to a level of fulfillment and satisfaction that very likely you require. We've heard that over and over again. So we need to think about at this point, what sort of experiences, what kind of work do we want to do? What, what sorts of things and activities in our, our lives helps to light us up and makes us feel alive. That's super important to recognize. So as I said, at midlife and mid career, you have been armed with experience, right? And you've gained answers. And now it's time to listen to them. Listen to that call and trust your gut. You have lived enough in the life that you lived in to know what no longer serves you what, and what can. So don't be afraid. As I go back to the question of Karen, right, who asked me, uh, literally she said, um, what about people with less appetite of risk? Because we are concerned about ageism, age, age, ageism <laughs> and or staying competitive with younger entrepreneurs that are on social media more and they're just more savvy than us. 
Now, I get this a lot because I work with people that are sort of in their mid 30s all the way to their 60s, right? And that's also a question I get a lot is like, do I need to learn all this techie stuff to feel like I could work for myself? Or, you know, if I want to launch a project or I want to write a book or I want to, you know, start a business, do I have to go back to school or do I have to learn all these digital tools that all these younger entrepreneurs seem to sort of just have? And the truth is that there's no one way to sort of have a business, launch a project, or write a book. You are equipped with social equity, professional equity, skill set equity that maybe the younger generation may not have. And to not be afraid to leverage those tools. Know that you are going to do things differently than other people. So the key thing here is the self-awareness again, the skills to understand yourself, to do that deep introspection now so that whatever it is that you end up creating and going after is going to feel really in alignment with your strengths, with your natural abilities, and also something that you feel creative to do, right? That it makes it fun and creative for you to pursue rather than trying to fit yourself into another mold that you think you have to get into in order to feel happy and successful in your life. So to you, Karen, who gave me that question, I want, and for whoever else that resonates with that question, I want you to know that being tech savvy isn't, isn't the weapon of choice that you need to be able to go after doing something different with your career and your life. So very likely you might want to be self-employed. You want to do all those things and you want to really be um, focusing more on what is the work that you can do? What's the experience that you have that you can share and how can you impact really powerfully with what you already know how to do and what will be your way of sharing that? That's really the deep introspection that's necessary rather than bothering your mind with what techie tools do I need to do to do that? Now, just to give you a quick little you know, background of what that looks like. I too didn't know how to do digital marketing or social media. I didn't even have a social media platform the first year I had a business. What I knew how to do was build relationships. What I knew how to do was network. What I knew how to do was to present and talk about the things that I know how to do in front of a live audience. So in my beginning of time of recruiting new clients or spreading, you know, the message about my work was to actually do some real physical activities by attending local events, by telling my friends and family what I'm doing and asking for referrals, by helping the next person I see in the Starbucks that asked me about life purpose, you know, and going on about the story of my own life and helping them discover what the steps they might need to do to get there. That was what helped build my mastery for the work that I do today. And I think that's the part we forget is that your job is not to be a marketer, right? Your job is to do good work and do work that matters to yourself and other people. So rely on that, rely on that deep wisdom and the deep knowledge that you come with and focus on how you can reinvent that into a new career or a new way of earning a living and less distraction about the tools and the software and that the fact that you have to be savvy techno in technology in order to be successful. And lastly, look for examples, influencers that aren't in the category that you want to become. Like don't compare yourself to businesses and types of business or types of people that are not in alignment with your age group or your version of what you want your success to look like or the kind of business that you kind of want to run, right? So it's important because you're going to be a sponge is to really take the time to look for and ask people who are the types of influencers, business owners, you know, people out there that may be more in alignment with your life choices and your life stage. And then that way that's going to help you to really feel that you don't have to do all the things that you're not good at or aren't prepared to do or want to do even in order to get there because you have good examples of different ways that people can get there right? That you're more familiar with, that you're more in alignment with, that can then spark a lot more inspiration for you to start your creative ventures today. Okay. So that was a long video and I wanted to really dive into, right? Some of that identity shift and, and how to use that change in your crisis to look at the questions and answers that can come to you to help you find a path of where you would want to reinvent into. So as I said before, there is a much more in-depth webinar training I'll be running. So you can click on the links again, that's going to be appearing on the video and below the video, right? For how to join me. And we're going to dive into this. We're going to dive into how you can use that change that you're experiencing right now for the answers and the clarity that you need to pursue your next big thing. So I hope you join me there. 
And as always, I would love to hear your feedback and what resonated with you today when you watch this video. And what has been your experience in your own reinvention experience? And what have you learned about yourself through some of these navigations of crisis that might be happening in your life right now? Please share with me in the comments. I always, always watch out for them and reply to them personally. Thank you so very much for joining me today for today's episode. If you love this video, do share it with a friend, share it with people that you think would really benefit from it. And of course, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so by hit hitting the uh, notification bell button and of course the subscription button so that you'll be in the know for every new episode that I release every week, weekly-ish, which is what I promise to do. Okay, see you soon on our next episode.